real happy it was a turnout that um, seemingly a number more people are coming in, and so um, we welcome you all. I really need to um, thank our law clerks. Brooks is sitting at the end of the table. I know most of you know Brooks, but um, he's our phenomenal law clerk, and we are so happy that he's here with us to share his experience today. Basically, what we're doing here today is letting you all know about the Green Mutual and a new partnership that we've entered into with Golden Gate School of Law um, for a summer clerk clerkship program to begin next year. Um, we are so happy that Golden Gate um, agreed to partner with us because like me and, and Larry um, also attended uh, Golden Gate as well. Um, we are just so happy to bring in more Golden Gate Law School grads to our firm. We work for the Green Mutual. The firm is the Green Mutual's firm, but we actually co-manage the firm together. And you'll learn a little bit more about Larry later on today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Green Mutual first. So what is the Green Mutual? We are an insurance company. Of course, everyone has seen the ads on TV. Um, and we actually, I was really happy to see during the championship game, actually sponsored one of the, uh, the scoreboards. Is that what it is here? Thank you. And some commercials as well. So that was actually really nice to see that locally. We um, are based in Boston. And um, we were founded in 1912. We just had a centennial celebration last at the beginning of this year. Uh, we have approximately, I'm going to guess, 45,000 employees worldwide. We are in almost every state and in about 20 countries internationally. It's a diversified global insurer, that's their tagline, and we are one of the third largest PNC companies in the world, which is a big deal for them because they've been growing and growing over the last 10 to 15 years, and we're happy to be part of our company. Um, approximately, um, I think we're 84th on the Fortune 100 list, and I know um, people look out for that in terms of you know, liability, in terms of the company's profitability, and it is a strong company. Uh, we do enjoy a lot of special things being employed by the Green Mutual. We're able to participate in things like this, and also have you know training and different other things that Liberty offers as an employer as well. Um, we offer a wider range of insurance services and products from auto insurance to homeowners insurance, work comp insurance, property insurance, you name it, we sell it. Um, also, um, we have an insurance, uh, as an insurance company, we have our own attorneys. So we have about a thousand attorneys, we think, oh, excuse me, 700 approximately 700. The numbers fluctuate and change day to day. Um, we have about 300 attorneys in home office in Boston that practice international <coughs> and that's the other thing. It's a great opportunity in home office to work and, and learn. And now uh, the field is what we do, we're field attorneys, and basically we defend the insurance, uh, insurance, excuse me, insurers with the insurance contracts that they purchase through the potential. So the insurers are clients. And Larry's going to let you know, uh, know a little bit about what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. But I wanted to take this opportunity for the attorneys to introduce themselves. And I guess I'll start with Larry um, to kind of introduce himself and let him let you all know what he does and his background as well. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I know uh, school's very busy. And the comment usually free lunch you always drag me into this thing, so I hope you guys are I am a proud employee of the Mutual. I've been working approximately six years. Uh, prior to that, I worked in a similar insurance defense captive uh, law firm for another insurance carrier for about 15 years prior to that, so I'm my gray hair. Uh, my background is probably very similar to a lot of yours. I, I was a, a working class kid. I came to California on a lark and ended up at Golden Gate. I went to law school because I couldn't find a job during a recession back in late 80s, early 90s. Uh, so I sat in these chairs and hoped, just prayed, not just hoped that I was going to get a job because I was borrowing more money every day, wondering how I was going to pay it back. And I assume that's what we're about to see now. Um, while I was in school, I had the great fortune of meeting a gentleman named Tony Bastone who ran the uh, placement service here. I don't know if his name still lingers. Uh, and through a friend of a friend, he arranged for me to get a law clerk job uh, with the prior insurance company that I, that I worked for. So I was able to clerk for that company through my time in law school and make money I needed to live on. 
and at the same time, gained a lot of experience in terms of about civil litigation, got some idea of what I might want to do when I got out of school. And at the same time, while I was in school, I geared myself towards some great trial advocacy programs, uh, took a very simple class as well as here at the trial recently at the Memorial Center. And just got interested in trial work. And um, when I graduated, I was asked to stay on the <coughs> I was working for. And I understand for 15 years until I'm um, just going away not too long. The um, point that this story as it relates to all of you, that you Golden Gate is known as a school that is a practical educator. If you're going to school here, you're getting the requisite theory you need, but I know that there's so many opportunities here to get hands-on experience. Uh, class, not just in the classroom, great in terms of opportunities. And you're, you know you're going to be working lawyers. And I found that in that, I, I really was drawn to that philosophy. I was never going to be a law professor. I was never going to be the guy that was locked in an office writing a brilliant brief. I always knew I was going to get my hands dirty and out in the field fighting with people. And the combination of Golden Gate's curriculum and then balancing uh, you know, the work I needed in the very disciplines I was studying was great for me. And it, it, it was, I was able to build on it and get uh, from a student to law firm to a paralegal to a lawyer and I found a way to get into a craft that I enjoy I'm hoping Brooks is not shy and talks a little bit about this because I think he's living a little bit of this right now. He talks all the time about being really jazzed up about being the court and uh, you know, even his arraignments and other things that he's doing and they'll probably never be later. But uh, they are related to what he's doing over at our office and he's doing a great job of it. So there's a great marriage between making a couple of bucks and expanding your skill set before you go out in the marketplace and compete for a job. And Liberty Mutual is, is very tied into that. You're gonna, they, they want to make your, your life better because they're a company that wants to give back. At the same time, they're looking for brilliant young people that they can buy into, buy into the company and build their careers so that they have success in the If you want to be on with that, let's go to the question here. Andrew, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> My name is Andrew Stevenson, and I've been with Liberty just over 13 years. I, Went through the whole program at Golden Gate. I had a year, about and a half, the DA's office as a law clerk. I worked to the DA's office in the juvenile hall unit as a certified per, uh, intern where I got action to a trial. I had the opportunity to do that. I had absolutely no desire to ever be a law professor. I had no desire to ever do a job in a large corporate law firm where you're sitting there 12, 15 hours a day in the law library. <clears throat> like Larry, I was more interested in going out and practicing law. I actually went out and did that. And had no desire to ever work for a large corporation for 13 plus years, but I'm glad I did. It was a really very good experience. In those 13 years, I went back to Boston for two years, which is the corporate headquarters, and went traveling around the country training people in software. I was able to do some statistical analysis of the data. <clears throat> and they actually try to work really hard for people. Up. If you show an ability or a skill, Liberty does take advantage of that and move forward. And like Helen said, the corporate office has like 300, often 300 attorneys. I knew some of the international law attorneys. So they would do transactional, transactional work. They would fly off to Portugal, for example, work with the purchase of a corporation. They would do the background checks. They would do all that type of work. They would also represent Liberty itself when Liberty was being sued by somebody for some unusual reason. So the range of type of opportunities of Liberty are everything from our 70 plus law offices in most of the states all the way up to doing transactional corporate work within the corporation, international law. It's a quite a variety. And when you talk about size and scope and opportunity, there's a World Cup coming up in Brazil, Liberty Seguros down in Portugal is one of the major sponsors of the whole World Cup down there. So I mean, it's a big company and a lot of opportunity. Uh, as, as for me, I, I don't do civil. I do the workers' comp part, which, again, in law school, as you can imagine, I'm at the DA's office. Do, I never anticipated I would work doing workers' compensation. My desire was to go work at the DA's office, become a prosecutor, retire 35 years, 40 years later, whatever. 
didn't work out that way, job downturn. It was kind of a slow economy. Took a job because of, I needed to eat, pay off debt, and <clears throat> really started to enjoy what I did because you jump into the practice of law, you're not sitting there in, in, in an office, you're actually out there litigating, meeting people. And workers' comp turned out to be quite interesting to me because I like the medical field. I like the fact that it's a more, I don't know, negotiating type position, so pure adversarial moment by moment. There are some drawbacks, of course, but for the most part, it's very, very interesting. And it stayed with the company I have for all these years because of the people. I worked in another law firm that I did not necessarily feel as comfortable, but the manager here, the people I worked with, the company, I was so much more comfortable, I stayed this whole time. You have a good program, and I'm very happy with it. I have the opportunity to do other things than work as a lawyer, and part of that is personal things. I go out and do marathons, I have time to do other activities, so instead of spending, and that was one of the reasons I didn't want to work for a large, massive law firm, is I do have the opportunity to go out and do activities. I'm not sure what else is needed to ask or answer, but if you have any questions, you can ask, ask me on the matter or anybody in the problem. What's your name? Uh, hi. I don't have a name tag because I just kind of tagged him off when I saw that there's free food. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the food from my office walking it's over not here. Either, I'm so. not an either. I'm not. My name is Truman Fon Kwan. I graduated from here in 2007, so I'm not too far separated from most of you. Um, my experience is uh, somewhat similar to Andrew in that while, I, while my third year uh, here at Golden Gate, I, uh, I interned at the DA's office both in San Francisco and Santa Clara. Uh, I ultimately enjoyed the trial experience there. I wanted to be a prosecutor as well. Uh, but as most of you probably know, very, very difficult to get uh, any sort of public job at this point, especially district attorneys and especially in those two particular counties. Um, happened to see a friend of mine who went to school here who was actually uh, eventually became a lawyer here at Liberty Mutual. She got me a post bar clerkship, so I started here with Liberty about five years ago. After I took the, after I took the bar, before results came out, uh, when the results came out, they were favorable. Uh, unfortunately, Liberty didn't have a position open for me, and so I left to work for a small private civil litigation firm out in Walnut Creek. Um, but due to my extensive legal prowess, Larry called me about a year later, asked me to come back, and I've been here ever since. Um, Obviously, I never anticipated working for an insurance company. It wasn't my goal, uh, nor was it my goal to work in insurance defense, which is essentially we, we defend against personal injury claims, also against uh, construction defect claims when we represent certain subcontractors that are working on certain projects. Uh, you know, that, that was not obviously my intention in law school, but I've enjoyed it so far. I've been here with Liberty. It's going to go on to my fourth year next, uh, by the beginning of January. Uh, and I've gotten a lot of experience. Uh, I can say this. Well, since then, I've had I've had four jury trials. I first chaired each and every single one of them with nobody there to help me. Um, results have been uh, pretty favorable, I would say, right there. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to make sure that's on that's on record. But um, it, it's it's been a great experience. And and sort of to piggyback off Andrew, work is hard. Work is busy. We're we're constantly doing things, but. It doesn't take away time from your own personal life. You know, if you want to go home and if you have time to spend time with your family, social life, etc., you're, you're, that's just it, you're going to be able to do that with this company, and I've been able to do that. And, and Liberty has done a great job of allowing us to work that way and being flexible with our hours and things like that. Um, and I've taken advantage of that at any possible point that I can. Um, so. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's been a great company to work for, it's been a great experience, and um, yeah, I don't know what else to add. <laughs> uh, my name is Franchley Mello. I'm actually not an attorney, I'm the supervising paralegal in the office. So I um, manage the law firm team and will be working um, and have worked closely with TGU over the last five years since I became the manager um, of the paralegal team and law firm team in, in recruiting. We um, basically, with this position that we're, we're seeking, it's for um, our summer 2013 clerkship. And we typically have one law clerk per semester or during the summer. Sometimes it can be up to two, depending on how busy um, the workload is. 
Um, and with that, that law clerk is um, typically working a good um, 30 hours a week, I'd say. Yeah. Brooks. And so um, basically, just to go over um, the position, if I may, is that fine, Helen? Um, you would be supporting both our workers' compensation and civil litigation department. And so uh, you get a wider range of experience through, um, typically, it's a lot of research and writing. Sometimes it can be, you know, very, a lot of it's actually last minute, I would imagine, because you get general questions um, coming in from your client or the attorney is getting um, ready for a hearing or some, some type of motion they have to file and they come up with certain questions. So they're running over the law clerk to use your experience of research using Lexis and Westlaw. Um, you know, and a lot of you guys are very uh, technically savvy with that. We don't really use the books anymore, so um, and we have those, those support systems. Also, um, in civil litigation, uh, we like to have our law clerks assist with interviewing our clients. Um, especially to answer formal interrogatories, answer to um, answering discovery in general, um, especially um, during trial prep, Bruce has been great with that this whole year. We've had numerous trials come up, um, and he can even talk about his trial assistance and one he, he did earlier this year. Um, you're able to shadow depositions, assist with mediation and arbitration briefs, um, as well as in workers' comp with administrative law, um, as a paralegal, I'm also you know, a hearing rep, so I have my own case so that I get to go out in the field, I get to go to the district offices and represent our clients and advocate for them against the opposing counsel. I get to go and take depositions. So I, I get kind of the best of both worlds and I gain that, I've gained that experience in the um, 10 years I've been with the company. But we also like to have our law clerks do that as well and gain that experience. Um, like we said, shadow depositions, but in workers' comp, we even let them go to hearings that are usually more of our, our low value exposures, exposure cases, but they've either worked up the file leading up to the hearing that allows them to uh, assist and attend those hearings, whether it's like a lean conference or um, trying to get a motion to compel order before a judge. And also, um, sometimes we have appearances where we have to go to a small claims court and we can use our law clerks for that as well. Um, and the other thing that um, we utilize our law clerks for is also assisting us with any type of writing appeals on decisions um, if we need to for workers comp. So it's a wider range of assignments. You definitely get your feet wet fast when you, when you walk in that door. Um, I must say, you know, I've been with the company just you know, 10 years now, this year, and um, with, within the time I've been with the company, nine of the law clerks I've known so far have been hired you know, as Liberty attorneys. Right now, we still have four of them with our company, and um, Truman was one of them that, that worked with me. Brooks has um, been working with me, and um, you know, we've had a great success story with having our law clerks stay on board. A lot of it is just timing if there's an open opportunity at that moment for them after they pass the bar. But um, it, it just definitely is a great transition. And you are getting your feet wet right away with being able to attend depositions and actually take those depositions and take those hearings um, right away um, after passing the bar and become an attorney in the office. So um, after I'll be passing out the flyer, um, we'd like to, if you're interested, have you email me your resume and a writing sample uh, no later than November 5th, as I'll be working with Larry and Helen going through um, the resumes and, and trying some interviews before I have the baby. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, Helen, I'll pass that. Oh, actually, I want to pass it over to Brooks because I want to thank Brooks again for um, putting this whole thing together um, um, with GGU, with Helen as well, and I want him to share his experience um, so far with our company. How's it going on, Brooks? Uh, I know most of you, some of you. Um, I'm at 3L. Um, I've worked for Liberty since um, February of this year. Um, I got the job through LCS, uh, saw the posting, applied. Um, it's been a great experience. I think that the things that I've been exposed to in this job have 
past everything else that I've done. Um, I worked for uh, Judge Kiduchai at um, San Francisco Superior Court before this. And I did HLP, but um, everything that I've done um, at, at Liberty just passes that. Um, I've written a ton of briefs uh, for trial. Um, I've done small claims briefs, arbitration briefs. I've uh, sat in, in an actual jury trial over at Hayward. That was uh, great. Um, I've made a couple appearances on the workers' comp side, which has been really cool. I was by myself wearing a suit, and it was myself, the uh, uh, applicant's attorney, and the judge. And uh, I've won one of two, so I'm uh, working on my uh, ratio there. Um, what else? Uh, my typical day um, is, uh, I'd probably say about 70% of the work I do is um, on the civil litigation side, 30% is workers' comp. But, um, you know, it, it really depends on what's going on. A lot of uh, last minute projects because things come up and they kind of defer to me if there's a discovery response to, and there's some kind of problem with it, I'll call the client um, and get everything out before uh, they file a motion to compel. Um, what else? Um, How your hours do you your school? Yeah, oh yeah, um, I, I do work a lot, but it really uh, isn't a problem with school because they're very flexible with me. Um, I work uh, about five hours a day um, in between classes and it works out great. Um, I've kept my grades up, uh, it hasn't been a problem. Um, they're, Fringe is uh, great when it comes to if I have mock trial or something and I have to miss work. Um, they're extremely flexible on, on that level. Um, I've uh, sat in on a deposition, which was a great experience. I'm in the deposition class right now, and that helped me a lot. Um, and overall, my writing, my research, and just my knowledge of you know pretrial civil litigation has gone through the roof uh, with my experience so far. So my team here uh, did a much better job explaining things that we do on a daily basis than I could do. I'm really happy that um, you could hear their experience and I urge you after this presentation to really go up and, and ask questions and you know, if you have anything that you have specifically related to the law or anything regarding your career, definitely as well. We're very happy to talk to you. This is a time to take advantage of it. And we have food, so that's actually even better. Um, the, uh, Eventually has the flyer, she'll pass it out. Um, this is a special um, program again that we have with GGU. Um, this um, is a home office position, a main funds position. So um, we're very, very excited because we'll have now an extra position in our office. And Howard University and I believe FIU University also have entered into different agreements with Liberty Mutual and they've had successful programs and we're getting backing off to just those programs. So hoping that this expands and this, you know, becomes countrywide in terms of um, the scope. But um, we are the players that are looking for the best and the brightest. We feel like Home Gate has the best and the brightest. And we have eight attorneys right now in our office of a mobile gate. So um, it tells you a lot. So I just want to thank you. And um, I don't know what the format is, but we have the questions now. So I guess, OK. So we're opening up the questions now. I actually had a question. Uh, so when it comes to this paid summer position that you're talking to the students about, what are the ideal qualifications you're looking for in the applicants? So someone who actually has some practical knowledge about the law, actually we're looking for um, two years, two L's and three L's right now. Um, we want people that are flexible in terms of learning. Um, we do a lot of, as you can hear, a lot of work very quickly. So we need people that can adapt and that are independent. Actually, have great computer skills because we definitely need that because we're very, very tech oriented. Our attorneys work remotely uh, at times in our court or working from home or, or doing things that are not in the office as well. So, we need someone who's a good computer and um, someone that um, can work, with, you know, sometimes a little supervision because some of us are out attending appearances, Ratchet out, Larry's out, Brian out. So, you definitely someone who Self motivated? Anything else you can see next to it? A lot of the attractive candidates in the past, uh, as Coach was just mentioned, has taken a deposition 
class right now. A lot of the more attractive candidates have taken civil procedure or trial advocacy or um, you know are, are farther along with evidence so that we don't have to hold your hand through everything. Autonomy is very important. Uh, we're very busy, we're very fast moving uh, law firm our office. The velocity of our cases is much quicker than you'll find in a private firm. So we don't have a lot of time to spend on projects. So having that base knowledge before you come to us is very attractive. And one of the things that I always want somebody who's not shy to walk up and ask you something. Because sometimes you're sitting there, we don't want to spend two, three hours looking at, at a question. We can just go in there and get it in two, three minutes. Uh, I work in a law firm before where they weren't comfortable letting people come and ask you questions. I, personally, I'd rather have somebody come in there and ask me the question, what are you saying, than sit there for two, three hours trying to figure out what it really was said. And everybody in our office, as far as I have experienced, is perfectly fine when they come in there and say, uh, you have a question, you want us to do this, but it really doesn't make sense. What are you trying to have to do? And that's one, to me, a big quality because I don't have time to sit there and wait. And if you do have a question, I'll answer it. Just don't be afraid to ask it. For the, as far as the civil litigation, um, you, you cover, I assume, premises liability, personal injury. Do you do uh, medical malpractice or cover any of those areas? We, we do not. Uh, Liberty does, and it's uh, companies its own, they do write a lot of professional liability insurance. We do not defend those cases. Our cases are, are, are limited to the very subject matters that you just mentioned. We do a lot of premises work, uh, a lot of auto defense, construction defects, catastrophic injury and construction site accidents, things of that nature. For a short period of time when I was working there, when we brought Safeco, there was a little bit of hangover doing um, insurance you know, work for brokers and things like that. And there was a rumor at one point that we might be taking on dental malpractice, but we have not done that, and I don't anticipate that happening in a field year. So. Does Liberty handle all of their cases through trial, or is there ever instances where you seek outside counsel? There are instances where we have sought outside counsel. The trend in the insurance industry is that they keep now are keeping as many cases in house as they possibly can. That's money savings. Uh, they, if they can keep their legal fees down, they can reduce their premium dollars and attract more business. So, there's to a to a company, they're all trying to keep as much as they can in house. That having been said, we have situations where we have conflicts of interest. Uh, we might have cases where the exposure in the case ex exceeds the policy limit, and we are uncomfortable in that setting, taking the case to trial, because we're going to expose a policyholder to their, their assets being exposed. And as employees of the insurance company, while it's not technically a conflict, Liberty is very conscious of and uncomfortable with it. So in those instances, we might send a case out to outside counsel. We might have a circumstance, frankly, where the case just gets too big and too complicated, um, where our staff not adequately defend the case through trial. And everybody you know, is very conscious of that and, and, uh, and fulfills its obligation to its insurer to provide an adequate defense and then a call in the panel for them. But the, the model is that we take the case in in the absence of a conflict or an extraordinary circumstance before the trial. And uh, just to add to that, there are those rare cases like Larry spoke about where it just takes up so much of your time that it's not worthwhile or cost effective for us to keep a file in the office where if we have an attorney, a paralegal, law clerk spending 30, 40% of their time just on that case, while meanwhile you have 20, 30, 40, 85 other cases to deal with, it just doesn't make sense for you. You can't represent your client to the best of your ability. And customer service is a big focus, so you'd rather send work like that out. Have an outside law firm who can focus the time and energy and we focus our time and energy in providing good, product, good um, products for our client within what we have. I'd like to uh, add on to something that Andrew said earlier about um, like asking for help and stuff. When I first started, I knew nothing about workers' comp, and I was kind of they kind of threw me into it. And I was I was a little intimidated at first, but uh, between Andrew uh, Fringley and the other uh, uh, workers' comp. Uh, attorneys and paralegals. They're always uh, willing to help me with anything I don't understand. 
and ensure that I get the job done correctly. So I'm not spinning my wheels, I'm not freaking out, but it really has helped me uh, learn the workers' comp law and able to do my job well. And same with uh, the civil attorneys too, if I have a question about discovery or civil procedure that I can't find or it'll take me you know, an hour to look up, um, I can just go ask anyone and they're more than willing to help me. So for students who are wondering whether insurance defense is the right fit for them, how would you compare the work you do to other practice areas? I can compare it to, I have a friend who works for Oregon, and I know that he does um, employment law, and I know I never see him. Uh, I see his, his babies and his wife, but I don't see him. So Liberty uh, in-house is a really good balance uh, for us. I think her control as well, um, eventually I know it's good for her too. When you uh, have a family and or have other interests, such as Andrew running marathons, is a big thing for him. So, we found that in this position, we're able to we work hard, don't, don't get me wrong, but it's a good company to work for in terms of balance. I think uh, we all learn a lot day to day when we take our cases to trial or handle them just regularly. I think um, in the big scope of things, though, we are very balanced. Um, I, I think that um, outside counsel, you know, they're making the big bucks, but you know, it's a lot of time. It depends what you want to do and what your goals. I think when you're out of school, everyone's in balance that oh, I've got to pay my loans back, I got to find a job that's going to pay me all the money, and then you know I want to work for that fancy firm you know that has a beautiful building in the city, um, and, and that's fine. People do do that, but then sometimes they understand that you're giving up a little bit in terms of your own you know well-being. I, that being said, and I'm not again not saying anything negative about that. There's some people actually like that and are happy in that time of that office. But I know I wouldn't be. Um, I've been at Liberty now for 15 years, and before that, another in-house firm I worked with Larry for about the same amount of time. So I understand that this is a lifestyle choice for me, you know. And again, it's all about balance. I'd probably take that answer one step further. And the question is really about insurance defense versus other practice areas and how we boil it a little bit more down to litigation. Um, we are still in a civil litigation set, uh, setting and there's tremendous pressure with deadlines, performance and depositions, motion work, and when we do go to trial, trial work. So if I were in your seats um, and starting a job search, I might be spending a little bit more time thinking about that you know, the nature of the work setting because the panel is absolutely correct. Your billable hour requirement with the Liberty office is going to be much less than it is with a private firm. Uh, with Liberty, you're not going to be dealing with the political hierarchy of a firm and making sure the right people like you and stepping on the right back and getting way towards a partnership. None of that sort of, I'm, I'm joking, but none of that sort of, uh, those dynamics just don't exist. But what does exist is the day-to-day -day grind. You have a case inventory that's assigned to you. Each one of those cases has statutory deadlines that you as the attorney on that plea are obligated to meet and to bring that case from answering a complaint to conclusion. And that's not going to go away in any litigation setting. Um, we have a very talented lawyer in our office that just recently moved on to another job. She, she um, took a job in the education I think her job now is a little bit more about doing research and policy papers and advising districts on talking things I'm not smart enough to understand. Uh, but her, one of her big motivations in moving away from our office uh, was the nature of civil litigation. She liked the people, she liked the jobs, she was very, very good at it. She was someone I relied upon often, research, motion work, and she was not afraid to get in there and, and put on a fight. But, away from work, she was tortured all the time, worried and, and stressed out. And you know, she sat back and thought, oh, do I really want to spend 25 or 30 years amped up at this level of stress and, and tension? So I mean, I, if I were looking at practice areas, that, that would be part of my examination as well. And I think it's not really directly related to insurance defense or in-house setting. It's what, what, do you, what do you really want to do? You're working really hard. Borrowing a lot of money, uh, you know, you're putting off things that you probably want to do with your life now. There's 
there's got to be a reward there. Um, so think long and hard about the buyer you want to generate. Um, I think also part of the question is, <clears throat> Cold Case has a very strong public interest law. We're not public interest law per se. And so just to get that on, yeah, working for an insurance company may not be what you could, a lot of people go to and come out thinking that they're going to do. But that doesn't mean what we do is not something that people in public interest law are not interested in. We represent the everyday person for civil and civil litigation. You have the auto owner, you have the property owner, you have a lot of people that you represent that's not in your traditional public interest law if you're trying to save some dark, and then some dark fish out in the Sacramento Valley. You're trying to you're representing everyday people that don't have an opportunity for representation, perhaps. You have your car driver in front of lives in the mission, or, or their home is broken into. So you are representing a variety of people. You're representing their interest against somebody who has committed something against them. So, yes, it's not your traditional way of public interest law where you're out there trying to clean up the environment, save the world, and do all that, but you are representing day to day people all the time. And that is our focus, is making sure that the policy we provide to our, to our parties they are defended appropriately. And I wasn't sure if that's exactly where you're headed, but having gone to Gold Cave, I know the reputation here is heavily toward public interest. We have a very strong public interest law group here. So I just want to make sure that that wasn't something that was overlooked. I, I, I think, if anything, I might be one of the few up good at I've had experience in a private firm. I've worked at a private firm with global hour requirements different partners that you work with, try and uh, the, the firm shall remain nameless, but Larry's a little bit correct in that there are certain partners that just, just have, a little bit correct. <laughs> <laughs> little. There are certain, you just have to be good with the partners. It's just a completely different environment when working in a private firm. With the certain billable hours, you, the, the time it requires for you to have to get in and get that eight, nine billable hour requirement of work, a uh, day of work. Uh, to meet your yearly requirement of 2,000 some odd hours a year to get that bonus that you want to try to get uh, by, by Christmas, uh, things like that. Um, not so much the quality of your work sometimes, but again, just getting in good with that one partner that you know that if I get in good with them, I'll get on the partner track. I'll become an associate, instead of a junior associate, a junior attorney, I'll become an associate attorney, then a senior attorney, and then a partner. Uh, for me, that was not the type of environment that I, I Enjoy. Uh, I'm a, obviously, I, I will not obviously, you don't know me, but I am, I am a naturally competitive person, but it was very, very hard for me to compete with coworkers, people that I actually enjoyed working with, people that I felt that I needed to kind of nudge aside in order to benefit myself. That just wasn't the environment for me. Um, and so, you know, while you, when you work for an insurance company, you're going to sacrifice maybe some time, maybe. Uh, this uh, the acceleration of pay. You're also going to get again flexibility of time, flexibility of scheduling. You're probably going to get better benefits. You're probably going to get more consistent bonuses and raises. You'll get better retirement plans, obviously, than a lot of these private firms that simply just don't have that because they're not a billion-dollar company uh, with you know with offices and what Helen said, every single state, 20 different countries, all over the planet. Um, and for me, that worked out well. It worked out better for me. Um, I'm able to work from home when I want to. I'm able to make kids when I want to. Um, Frank is on number three, and so am I. So, uh, and, and, that, and it doesn't, you know what I mean. <laughs> but what I mean is, is that it doesn't take away from your time. My wife doesn't ever complain, hey, you don't come home. You know, sometimes she complains I'm home too much, and I need to get out. Um, but that's the sacrifice. That, that was the, the cost-benefit analysis I made uh, when I decided to come back to Liberty. Private firm wasn't for me. It might be for you, but uh, that's ultimately something you're going to have to weigh when you decide where you're going to go. At the risk of belaboring this point, I, I want to add a little something that Jim has just mentioned. This kind of cost benefit analysis. One of the things that I look back on when I and I did have throughout my career, you meet people. I've had a lot of offers to go to private firms as well. And when I was younger, what, what kept me from doing it, and I mentioned this because this might be something that's important to those of you seated on the other side of the table. Um, what kept me from moving when I was young is that when I worked in these in-house settings um, without that firm hierarchy and the, the, so I would guess I would have been a junior or just a lawyer, a junior lawyer, or associate, senior partner, whatever it was. Um, people in that position have to wait a great deal of time before they can assume any responsibility. I, mean, I know 
lot of friends of mine that are very, very talented litigators now had to wait about five years before they can even take a deposition by themselves. They go uh, out and argue a motion by themselves. And I was, when I was in school, I got really jazzed up about trial advocacy, and I wanted nothing more. I thought being a lawyer meant going in a courtroom and arguing. I watched too much TV. I'm old enough that LA Law was around when I was, uh, you know. Um, I thought that's what it was about. I thought that's why I was going to school. And the idea of waiting five, seven, eight years to have that opportunity was very unappealing to me. And in this, in our setting, it's by virtue of it, it's set up. It's, it's not tiered. It's you go in, you get assigned a caseload. And I've always said to people that work for me, your caseload is like your law firm. You're in charge of those cases. You do what you want with them. You do it right. You don't get out of trouble. You don't get in trouble. And you get good results. You'll never hear from me. But Truman, that's probably almost verbatim, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I don't hear from them. Yeah, until he gets, <laughs> until he gets in trouble. Um, my point being is that you have, you, know, you obviously you need training and instruction when you're young and new and all that sort of thing. But once you get into a job and you're halfway competent, you have cases that are in your skill set, you are responsible for that. I, I tried my first case three months after I was hired uh, as a lawyer. Um, I'm not sure that would happen today. I mean, it's a little different because the, change, the structure of the courts have changed. And some of the limits of what you could lose have changed. Um, but I mean, that was really attractive to me. And that 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 has not changed. I mean, Truman's not been out of school very long. And he's tried five jury trials, three of them this year. You know, he's on track to probably do two more before the end of the year. Uh, so if you're creating that kind of you know, quick experience, it's great. And it's whether you're going to stay with the insurance company or not, is that I, the lady I was mentioning that just left, and I was I had a little exit talk, and like, you know what I'm saying is how, I'll talk a little bit about all the positives. You know, you come into a job blank out of law school, and I don't know what the hell you're doing. And your job to job, you have to manage your career too. The company or a firm or nobody else is going to manage your career for you. It's your obligation, and it's your responsibility to yourself. And you have to go in there thinking, you know, your mind and your spirit's in a toolbox. And you have to think, what can I learn from this job? What skills can I take from this job that are going to make me a better attorney? What skills am I going to learn from this job that are going to make me more marketable out, out there in the world if this job doesn't work out for me? And I have found in these in house settings, you have that opportunity to, I mean, hundreds of depositions, hundreds of mediations, uh, limited, and that's what the trials are going to be. You have the opportunity to actually go out and try a case. I mean, the number of people that have actually gone out and tried a case now in my career is, is we're starting to do it again. But for years, there, there are people out there in senior positions in law firms that have never tried a case. And it's a, it's a valuable skill that you're going to have to have if you're going to go into litigation. And, and you can get a real good base um, early on in this type of job, whether you choose to keep it or not. Last comment on that. At the private firm I worked for, I literally attended one deposition. I didn't take or defend it. I just sat in a room where another attorney took the deposition. I think that was it. Never attended me. Well, I attended mediation. Never attended arbitration. Never took trial. Um, since I came on the Liberty, I've probably taken and defended, I want to say, close to 500 depositions. Uh, tried four cases and hundreds of mediations and arbitrations, doctor depositions, expert depositions. You'll get thrown in very quickly, and you'll get to work. It's baptism by fire, which is the best way to learn. I can tell you without hesitation, if Brooks was admitted to the bar tomorrow, he'd be taking a deposition. And although we just described what we did, we also do um, appeals. I've been arguing in front of the appellate court. We've had another attorney in our office in front of the appellate court, so it does exist. So not only do we do litigation backward and forward, I and mean, depositions seems like every day, quarter every day it seems, but we also do have an opportunity to do it, appeals of different sorts, and make arguments in front of the appellate court when necessary. And again, although I'm not the attorney, an attorney in our office, I. I've had a handful of law firms in the last five going on six years of managing the team. And you see different personalities and, and what people's strengths are. And so I think from what everyone has discussed in their experiences, it like they said, it's based on what you see. Some people aren't aren't looking to be the ones doing trials. They want to just do the research and write. We've had some paralegals, but they were great paralegals that were just phenomenal with research and writing. They were like 
closed door and throw it underneath there and they just throw you back a great memo. And so, but that was their strengths. And so I think a lot of it is what you know your strengths are. I've uh, thrown in some law clerks who can get on the phone and already just start negotiating cases on the phone for me. And, and that was their strength. So I think a lot of it is what you see and what, you're, what you appear yourself to. And, and that's just something that I've, I've experienced through um, the many different law clerks who we've, we've hired. And um, I've, I've been, we've been great to have a wide range of a wide range of different personalities and different um, strengths in terms of research and writing, advocacy, going out and taking hearings for us. Um, very fortunate so far. Okay, I, I, meant, I noticed that it was a common theme among some of you, uh, your interest in perhaps working for the district attorney's office. And after taking classes, litigation classes here, I feel like that probably comes from you know, the exhilaration of being in the courtroom and things like that. Um, are you all satisfied working in uh, civil litigation um, with the amount of court time you're getting, things like that? Is that, are you happy? I guess is the well, overarching question. I think it depends what they ask. <laughs> <laughs> I would say overall, I'm, I'm happy, sure. I mean, there's times when um, we work hard. You know, there's times in any setting where you're Frustrated, you know, you have a bad day, but I would say, unbalanced, am I happy? Sure. And uh, I, I have more than enough work time. And I would say that everybody in our office has more than enough work time. If I had something that I could complain about over the last five or seven years, is we don't try as many cases as we used to, and that's changing. It's swinging back the other way, which is kind of the natural cycle. It becomes they insurance company will decide to try everything, and the plaintiffs will try everything, and then they realize it's kind of expensive to do that and for 10 years they'll settle and then they realize they're settling for too less money and they, the pendulum kind of swings back and forth and I think now we're in a cycle where we're trying more cases. Um, but Barney, you know, apart from that I don't really have a whole lot to complain about in the, in the nature of the work um, other than at times there's, there's a lot of volume, there's a lot of deadlines and I don't think that would be different in any other setting. Are you working with the DA's office? No, I'm not. I just I had an interest in doing something like that, and they feel that is you know the amount of work time. Yeah, they, yeah. I did the DA. I think everybody in the school does. I did the DA's office of the public defenders. Yeah. It's like it's like the debate. It's like the election. <laughs> you go on the, the prosecution or defense. But um, yeah, I encourage everybody. That's great. I'll let you do it. They'll take all the free labor they can get. <laughs> for me personally, I treat myself by sat in the library, fall library all day long, drafting five days a week. I, so for me, <laughs> litigation is perfect for me. I mean, it's, it keeps you going and jumping from case to case. You do have the opportunity to write. You do have the opportunity to do all of that. But honestly, I could not do transactional work. I could not do intellectual property. I have friends who do that. They're in a law, they're in a law firm day in, day out. They sit down. Sun, sun's not up. They go home. The sun's gone down. They move two feet. I, I could do that six days a week. I'd rather have an opportunity to go out and post people to go do a trial. To jump from um, doing an arbitration, from the arbitration briefs, but doing an, an appeal, to doing a letter to somebody trying to negotiate, going to a depo, going to a hearing, then walking out on Monday, knowing that 10 years later I'm going to walk out of there and done the exact same thing every day for 10 straight years. So that for me is a good fit. So I have two questions. Um, first, is there a question in your office at all to settle certain And two, um, how fondly or fondly do you look at students who have a criminal, um, I guess, law background who work with DAs and the DAs attorneys for law firms and for attorneys? Uh, I would, I, I couldn't give you exact number, but generally speaking, out in the, the civil litigation world, somewhere between 90 and 95 percent of the cases settle. So an overwhelming majority of the cases settle. Uh, I would say that in our office, if a lawyer tries. So we're tries like Truman, uh, doing three cases, four cases in a year, is on the high end. So it's not as if you're out every week trying cases. It takes six, eight months to prepare a case for trial. It's kind of a long track, and you know, a lot of the cases along the way. So yes, we do try most of our cases. As far as the criminal uh, experiences, uh, I work for the DA's office, and I also work for the Attorney General's office, um, and they hired me. So I don't think that, uh, I don't think that's a detriment. I think it's an asset because you have 
been put in a position where you've had to have some hands-on you know, experience uh, dealing you know, with the very same things that is advocacy. Sort of so no, I think it's an asset. I'm sorry, I didn't try to get your hand up. Yeah, I was wondering um, with your property insurance, if you do a lot of um, defense of landlords and tenant disputes? Uh, we do a lot less of it. In my past job, I did quite a bit of wrongful eviction defense. Um, it's the Tenderloin Housing Clinic here in um, San Francisco, but I work for a different company. Um, Liberty Mutual does defend those cases and they write an awful lot of property insurance for landlords throughout the city and throughout the Bay Area. We take uh, very, very few of those cases, almost none of them now, into the office. And the reason for that is almost, I don't know if you're working for the claims or anything, but the, uh, most of the complaints include prayers for punitive damages, attorney's fees, and travel damages under the statute. And the policies under which the uh, tenants are being insured don't include coverage uh, for those claim losses. And we typically, because of our in-house status, we don't defend causes of action that are uncovered for policy. It's part of what I talked about earlier. There's an exposure to the, the client individually and as employees of the company, we feel like it's the appearance of the company. Does that hopefully answer the question? Yeah, a little bit. I was, I was wondering about landlords. What, in, uh, um, if I didn't get it, let me know. I'll tell you what I No, no, I think you're right. Okay. And one, one thing that I'm not sure is covered in special responsibility, yes, we work for an insurance company, but at the same time, we're a standalone law firm under, under California state law. So you do have Liberty Mutual, but we are an independent law firm that has to represent our clients to the best of their our, our ability and to their interests. So, like Larry was talking, Larry's talking about these interesting issues. That's a good reason why we set it up. We don't want our Liberty Mutual to turn around to, to our law firm and tell us that we have to do something that would not be in our client's interest. That's why we would set it up. But we still remain as much as possible in the law firm. And we push back against our employer and our client when they're doing something we think 